Hello, hello. Good evening. Thanks for visiting Lima this afternoon, almost evening. Thanks for coming to this tour on Hago. My name is Vanessa Vasquez. I am your Lima City tour guide. And in about two minutes, we are going to start with a walk along part of the Bay of Lima to show you how is life in the big city in Peru, in Lima, the capital of this beautiful country. Please make yourself comfortable. This is going to be a walk of more or less 30 minutes in which we're going to be able to see the ocean. And also I will be able to answer your questions about Peru because this is an opportunity for me to show you that Peru is a nation with way more than a Machu Picchu or a Cusco city. Peru is a really interesting place. So let me turn the camera to say hi to you all. Thanks for coming to Lima. Hola, hola. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Vanessa. It's a pleasure to have you this afternoon. For me, it is almost 6 p.m. in the afternoon here, local time, Lima, Peru, GMT minus five. And we're going to walk along the Bay of Lima. I hope you like this view. This is going to be the view we're going to be having for most of our walk. We are in this moment in a non-touristic destination of Lima, by the way. Uh, the city of Lima is a capital city with lots of these streets, lots of history. But this is not going to be a boring history lecture only. <laughs> this is going to be a combination of a little history, a little reality, and also answering your questions about Peru. So please don't be shy. I want you to interact and to participate of this tour. Earlier today, I planned to do a tour to another section of Lima, but unfortunately, recently, we are having lots of protests in Lima. This is also the political center of the country. So sometimes it is complicated to make sure that, well, my live streams will be happening, especially if we're going to the historic center and the place where the president lives. So that's why I had to cancel that one because it's not very safe for me to be going in with a handle, a gimbal and a cell phone uh, in a protest. But we are now here in a much more safer location. We're talking about, well, anything you want. So we are officially starting with this tour. Thank you so much for my friends that are here today. I don't know if this is the first time you are here with me on a tour of Lima with your guy, Vanessa. Is this the first time you are joining me? Please let me know. And by the way, if this is the case, well, thank you so much for coming. And thank you so much for visiting my channel. My tours are all about Lima, my city. Uh, so uh, I would like also to get to know you, if possible, a little bit. And also, if you want, you can ask me anything about, well, uh, about house life here, uh, anything about me too. See, so please don't be shy, okay? Uh, by the way, just to start, I am an official tour guide. I started to be a tour guide many years ago. I have 15 years of experience guiding in Lima. So I know what people are looking for when they come to this city, and especially when they are uh, for the first time in Peru. So we're going to be talking about how is the life of people in Lima in this part of the city. So well, if you are ready, I am ready to start. Please, let's turn the camera. This is pretty much a surprise tour. It was not really, you know, like something uh, I planned with anticipation. I just wanted to have the chance of being with you a little bit and also sharing with you how is living in Lima. Uh, by the way, have you ever been in Lima, my friends? Anyone has been of you uh, before in the city or in Peru, maybe? Uh, if you have, possibly you have come to Lima first if you wanted to come to Pachu Picchu. And Lima is right next to the ocean, as you can see. By the way, this section you see here is where the Pan-American Games of 
2019 took place. The Pan American Games are sort of like the Olympics of Latin America. Part of these uh, games that happened uh, during the Pan Americans were played here in this section. And I have also some images to share with you all. Um, so this section over here is the cliff. This is a natural cliff we have here formed by millions of years of erosion. And you can see that we have a net over here. Can you notice the net, my friends? So the net is very important because you can see that there is a freeway down. And unfortunately, Lima lays on a seismic location. Lima lays on, the, uh, on an area where there is a fall. Uh, it is known as the Nazca Fall. Mm -hmm. And we have earthquakes very often. Sometimes the earthquakes we have here are so, so tremendously big that they can cause lots of damage in the city to private property. Also, notice this section uh, here. This is, uh, by the way, one of the um, areas of Lima that is considered a middle-class district. So we are in this moment in San Miguel district. I think that in the distance, you can see the name of the district, San Miguel. So the city of Lima is divided in 43 districts. We have 43 districts, 43 mayors, 43 city halls. I don't know if this is usual for you all in your own cities, but we have a lot of madness in Lima, lots of bureaucracy, to be very honest. This is more like a system created to um, make possible to offer more businesses, uh, uh, jobs to relatives of people who work in the city hall. But that's another story. So it doesn't work really that well, um, this idea of the division. Um, living in this part of Lima costs, to be honest, a lot of money uh, for most Limanians. Now, most Limanians uh, will not even imagine in living in, that, in this part of the city, especially because of the view. The view is really nice, right? So we have the ocean view every day, and you can see also uh, how we are getting into the darkness. Hola, Ben, hi, amigo, hello. Thanks for visiting, gracias. Thanks for coming. Uh, we, we are observing officially at this time, um, 6.05 p.m. today, uh, we are 6.05 p.m., is the sunset. But where is the sunset? No sunset, unfortunately, today. Why? Because Lima during the winter is always like this. We have a lot of clouds in Lima. This is the nature of the city. This is not pollution, my friends. <laughs> Thanks for now for coming. So um, the reason why the city looks like this, very, very humid, misty, and it has lots of clouds is because of the humble current. Uh, the humble current is a cold current of water that goes parallel to the coast of Peru and Chile as well. It's like a river within the ocean uh, that brings cold water from the, uh, from the south, uh, uh, from the Antarctica. So that's why the temperature around gets very, very cold in winter usually. And by the way, here we have something very curious I want to share with you because this is not really a tour about history, but is a tour about reality with little historic facts, little history. And here we have uh, one of the uh, let's say group of most famous friends, <laughs> neighbors of this zone uh, of Lima, of San Miguel. By the way, I live in San Miguel. This is my district. I don't live far away from here. And we have here the kittens of San Miguel. Uh, I do a tour to Miraflores Kennedy Park. Uh, if you would like to join also that one in the future, give me a follow, please. So in that tour, we visit the famous cats of Kennedy Park. Uh, we have, <laughs> it's gone, that one is a little bit shy. So 
the cats we have in Lima, there are several zones in Lima where there are cats that are like abandoned or feral cats. So the neighbors take care of them. They feed them. Uh, they are feral cats, by the way. They are not cats that are owned by anyone. But all of this food you see here, this uh, water, um, oh, their beds that are now clean. They have cleaned the beds. There are more beds on the other side. Are here uh, left by a group of good-hearted neighbors that are taking care of these kittens. Um, so this uh, is not even a non-profit organization. This is just a group of good fellas, good people that want to take care of the kittens. Um, in this zone, uh, although we are not really in a very cold, cold city in the world, Lima it is lays uh, in between a, a perfect 15 degrees Celsius in the winter and 30 degrees Celsius uh, in the summertime. So it, it is really nice climate. Um, we have uh, in this zone in particular, lots of cold breeze. So that's why it's important to take care of the kittens if well, we have, um, for example, abandoned um, doggies or cats or in this zone. So um, we are in this moment in Lima, by the way. Uh, this was a last minute tour posted very, very last minute. Um, I had earlier planned another tour that I couldn't run. So I wanted to make up also with you, my dear friends, if you wanted to come to that other tour. Um, also giving you the chance of asking me anything about Peru. If you would like to know about Peru, if you would like to know about how it's life in Lima, so please don't be shy and share your questions. And also let me know what are the things you would like to know about my country. Uh, Lima is located in the coast. So we are not next to Machu Picchu, by the way, just to clarify things. If you didn't know about the location of my city, we are right next to the ocean. Lima is the capital of Peru. We have 11 million inhabitants in this moment uh, in, the, in the city. And this is the most populated city in the whole country. Mm -hmm. So Laurie is commenting something. Thank you, Laurie. That's so nice to take it. Oh, yes, of course. We have... Well, around the world, I've noticed, uh, especially with these Hago tours, the Hago tours of my colleagues, uh, there's so much kindness around the world. And it's so good also to be able to focus in good news because there's so many bad news going on around. Um, it's so easy to get um, sort of like uh, poisoned with all of that negativity. But it's always good to share a little uh, of the goodness that people have also. Um, so let me show you where we are, by the way. Um, so this is one of the uh, many bike lines we have in Lima. I know that most people will be surprised that the bike line is not on the road. Have you noticed that? Uh, hi, Yana. Thanks for following the channel. Thank you. So uh, we are in an avenue that is right next to a cliff. You will see this in a moment. We're just walking a little bit more to see again the ocean. By the way, you can see here, the ocean is there. We, there's a tennis club over here. So uh, this is a middle-class district. Uh, I'm showing you a little bit of how a middle-class district in Lima looks like. And um, well, uh, because of the pandemic, some new bike lines were created in Lima, very, very speedy and poorly planified, to be very honest. But it, well, it, it, there was no time to planify things good, like with professionals. So the city halls of Lima started to create these bike lines like this, just taking uh, portions of the sidewalk uh, and adapting them, like painting them like red color, as you see. <laughs> and uh, they open space for a for a, for bikes, right? So uh, it is sometimes a problem because there are people that don't know where they are. They don't distinguish what's the bike line, and there have been sometimes some almost to be accidents. But many people, not really that much accident, but many people scared. <laughs> so it's not really uh, easy for many people to embrace these bike lines. So the apartments over here, all of them of course look to the ocean, 
but they are not as expensive as the ones in Miraflores, for example. Have you ever been anyone here in the group with me before in Miraflores district? I do a really nice tour to the cats of Kennedy Park in Miraflores. If you can, please follow my channel so you can stay uh, in one of those tours. So if you haven't, Jenna, thanks for answering. If you haven't, well, uh, Miraflores is a really nice touristic district uh, where you find the most expensive real estate in the seafront of Lima. So there, not far away from here, by the way, there, the apartments that are in the seafront are valued in one million U.S. dollars, right? So, but here, these apartments are a fraction of that, a little fragment of that amount. Um, they might be around 250,000 U.S. dollars, which is still is really good deal of money, but, but, how many Peruvians, not just people from Lima, how many Peruvians can afford that lifestyle? Um, thanks, Lori. Yes, I do believe that. I do believe that this is a really nice location. And this is how, for example, we can access to the beach, right? So staircases going down with some little interruptions for viewpoints for observing the ocean. Uh, and also... This section over here where we have all of these um, nice, uh, let's say, uh, spaces for uh, sports. But I want to share with you some pictures. So I, I, please stay prepared for the next picture I'm going to share with you. And if you can, please click on that picture, my friends. So in that way, you're going to see that the cliff where we are on top until more or less the 1960s used to be touched by the ocean. Are you noticing this, my friends? Mm? So you can see also that this section that we are, uh, where we are building this moment here, it is a part that has been gained by the, um, by the city. Oh, so this is uh, reclaimed territory, right? So, oh, Berhard, my friend, uh, has left also a comment. There was no bus stop indicated. She stopped the bus. Yes, exactly, Berhard. This is another interesting theme of conversation, uh, talking about how we stop the buses. And let me also go to that in this moment. But I hope you were able to see the picture, my friends, and notice this particular detail in which, you know, you can see the difference between how uh, was the cliff, um, let's say, before, right, uh, and now. So, uh, my friend Berhan mentioned that uh, we stop the buses anywhere. There's no bus stop, and that's true. Uh, look, for example, it's very easy to get, like, a little bit lost and walk on the bike line, right? Gracias, Diana. Thanks for your support. Gracias, gracias. gracias. <laughs> Hasta luego. So someone passed me a, you know, this is garage sale. Oh, venta de garaje. I think one day we'll have to do one of these garage sales, my friends, and maybe practice our Spanish. I have also a tour to practice Spanish. I don't know if you would like to do that with me. I used to do that a lot last year, 2021. So, well, I think we will be able to practice a lot of Spanish uh, in the future with this event. So, for example, let me show you. This is a, not officially a bus stop, right? So we have, for example, a lady. And this is a bus or uh, a mini minivan, let's say, that is just stopping anywhere. Anywhere. Do you have this in your cities, my friends? Do you have this? Maybe no, or maybe yes. <laughs> in Peru, this is very normal. No, a big no. <laughs> no, Laurie, yes, I can imagine that. <laughs> um, well, Yara, it sometimes is good, sometimes is not. Um, we are very spoiled. You know, um, this this form of you know, like just stopping the bus anywhere. If I was like, if, if I just do this, like five taxis and three buses will stop and will try to take me anywhere. 
<laughs> so um, we don't have a, it's sort of like a system that encourage the order, right? So, but this order is necessary to develop a strong city, right? An organized city. So um, we don't like changes and. Also, that's why it's complicated to introduce a system in which we have bus stops because bus stops are not like every block. You have to walk maybe three blocks for a bus stop. And that means also that uh, well, people that doesn't want to walk will prefer the other service that is more informal. Mm -hmm. So we are going to talk, but how do you get off? Or you say to the bus driver or to the ticket man, I want to get off on the corner and they will they will take you there <laughs> so yes that's that's a little bit of the system a little bit strange what is this <laughs> oh, so the ticket man is in the in the car there can you see that so he's the person who's saying oh I'm going to Miraflores Miraflores are you coming to Miraflores so well if someone wants to go there we'll ask look at these people stopping anywhere the bus right is organized chaos mm, organized chaos and the bus driver does what he has to do which is driving we are having also in these locations uh, uh like segregated trash bins uh let's practice a little bit of spanish plastico plastic metal right vidrio is glass and well paper and cardboard right so but this is just starting we are babies in this matter of um, recycling and separation of trash. So it's getting darker and darker. As I said before, sunset is officially at uh, well, around 6. Uh, today was at 6.05 sunset. Um, and this tour started exactly at 6 my time, 6 p.m. my time. And in the afternoons, and this is also, well, was caused in a way by the pandemic, we are having in these public spaces, in these parks, that are of course all run by the city hall, the local city hall, these activities for the neighbors. So for example, if you want to learn how to dance marinera, this is marinera, by the way, this really nice rhythm you, you see here, uh, the ladies with the beautiful long skirts, uh, with this um, white fabric that they hang on their hands, and the men also with the hat, look at this gentleman over here, right? So this is the marinera, you can practice it for a very, very low fee. Uh, so this is a way the city hall is trying to promote some activity among the neighbors, some movement, uh, and also bring them a little bit of joy and happiness, right? So this activity is run by the local neighborhood. The more expensive the neighborhood where you live, the more services the city hall will give you. But how, for example, is to live in a very expensive uh, district in Lima? We have, oh, do you remember how many districts we have, my friends? Thank you, Lori. Gracias. Thanks for your support. So do you remember, I said it before, there was any, any uh, attentive to the number I said, mm, it's over 40. <laughs> oh, no worries. I can tell you the number. So we have in Lima 43 D streets. So we have different realities in Lima. We have, for example, D streets where they are so, so poor, where they are not even parks. Lima lays on a desert. Therefore, oh, parks are expensive. Uh, and this is a middle class district. So a year in a middle class district in Lima, for, for example, an apartment, if you own an apartment, you are going to be paying for property tax approximately uh, a, between, let's say, uh, 200 to 300 US dollars. That's a year property tax, right? But in a very exclusive district in Lima, like Miraflores, you can pay for the same property approximately 
two times more up to three times more if you are in the in the seafront section oh so that is that is just one of the expenses you're going to have in a district that is like more expensive uh, but also apartments here oh they have concierge so the concierge charges monthly oh uh, and that is also another additional expense you will have in uh, the city depending on where you live but the taxes you are paying to your district will give you in exchange really nice parks like this one for example look at this nice playground ah huh? really nice to have a chance where you have like, your kids enjoying uh, the ocean breeze clean ocean breeze and well a uh, view like this one every day so let's see a little bit of how uh, it's getting dark uh, in Lima because we are close to the equator line we like we always get to see the sunset at around 6 p.m. Uh, and 6.45 the latest in summer so in summer it gets dark at 6.45 and in winter at 6 p.m. Right, so it's always like that. And Lima is a city with a climate that is so similar like all year round. No surprises in terms of the climate. The only thing that surprises us a little bit uh, are the earthquakes. Look how much we have gained to the ocean in terms of, of land. We're talking about uh, um, approximately uh, in some sections one kilometer width no, of a, of area uh, so let me also show you another picture that is also very curious uh, so let me show you this one here I don't know if you can get to see it along the coast of Lima if you click on the picture you'll see uh, we used to have until the early 20th century lots of medicinal beach resorts so people used to live inside the city inland and not in the coast originally only the fishermen used to live in the coast uh, and uh, the coast was not really that desirable uh, until really recently so that picture you are seeing there is uh, one of the beach resorts of the city barranco and uh, there is where the elite of lima used to spend the summer days uh, like get, getting uh, immersed in cold water right so the water here is very cold how cold do you think is the water here my friends i would love to know your guessings if you if you can please share them with me uh, but let me tell you it's cold it's very cold if you can better in, in celsius because we use celsius here oh by the way this is a pathway that also goes to the beach we have several of those um, but you can go to the beach with your bicycle right so it's really nice and here we have of course the skaters ah we have a lot of places where young people can do some skating or we can also do some exercise here ah oh i used to do exercise a lot when i was much younger <laughs> in public spaces like this one because gymnasiums can be a little bit expensive so you can just come here and train a bit so that is a really really cheap alternative gracias brian thanks for your support and thank you so much in advance my friends for our your support to to me and also to hago because supporting this channel you are as well supporting hago because we are also uh, giving a uh, part of your tips to our hago uh, website for them to continue uh, permitting us to travel the world like this right so this uh, section of lima san miguel district one of the 43 districts of lima uh, is not far away from miraflores uh, this tour is by the way all about you know like any question you can have about peru you can ask me anything about peru anything you wanted to know about peru since long that it will be also fantastic for me to know what are the things you would like to 
to be clarified about my country. My country must be very, very distant uh, to yours. So um, if there is something you would like me to answer, that would be super. So um, as I was saying, we have some really nice and, and curious parks. The temperature of the water, oh, nobody mentioned any guessing, but no worries. I will let you know what is the temperature of the water here. Uh, it is around 15 degrees Celsius. It gets usually uh, a little bit lower, 14 degrees Celsius. So it's a very, very cold water, to be very honest. It's freezing cold. Uh, look at all the, the young fellas behind me. They are uh, also very happy, most young people, to be able to get it again in, in friends group because Peru is one of the countries that was way more strict than others in the region in South America about COVID. COVID regulations were very, very strong and we were not able to socialize. We were not able for months to go out of our homes. Uh, and now, well, this is possible. So people are having fun again with their friends, enjoying the sports they like, enjoying just mm, fresh breeze of the ocean by the way ma uh, the face masks we call them mascarillas the face masks outdoors are not compulsory although i highly recommend it and you will see that most people are using the face mask when they can oh, sometimes they don't use them properly <laughs> they use them below the chin but anyways they are using them right and here i have a uh, we're coming to the to the end of this walk uh, a pile that is very curious who knows this person um of course the whole world what a dumb question the whole world knows this person this famous musician uh let me go to the lower section here to to show you i think the whole piece of art uh, hi hilario uh, what time is here it is 6 uh, 30 almost p.m mm -hmm. Uh, we are in Lima, Peru. I am streaming from Lima, the capital of Peru. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can recognize here the name John Lennon, uh, the Beatles. Uh, what a legendary band. Um, but the question is why we have John Lennon in Lima, Peru, in San Miguel District. Um, it is a very curious story. It's cute in a way, but also strange. One of our mayors that, well, he was mayor for several years and also is one of the most beloved mayors we had back then in the days. He was a super fan of John Lennon. So uh, when he was young, also he used to have a band. He still has a band, by the way. I'm going a little bit uh, backwards. Oh, would you like a nice postcard picture, like longer? I don't know. Would you like it? See? So I think this one will be good for a postcard right so john lennon i'm going to turn the camera again in its location okay so um well he was a super fan he in many occasions said that the music of the bills saved him from you know not going into into a bad route in his life uh, the music saved him. So uh, when he became a mayor, he decided to honor his, his hero, <laughs> his idol, with a monument, and he made it here. So what a curious thing. You know, usually, you know, when you are a mayor, the, the money of the city hall should be, should be used in a more, you know, like a, let's say, helpful way for the neighbors. But no, he decided to create a monument to his hero, John Lennon. What do you think about this story? Do you think it was okay? Do you think it was not okay? <laughs> uh, just comment if you can please um well the um let's say the, the the general feeling about this statue but nothing about against john lennon but about the mayor is that a little bit a little bit strange but anyways he was the mayor everybody loved him everybody loved john lennon so okay <laughs>
<laughs> so thank you Larry and we are now getting all my friends to see the ocean again as we are coming to the end of this experience gracias Diana gracias and well uh, I said in the beginning also that this this is a pretty much surprise story it was not really that much planned because I had the idea of doing a, a complete different tour for you or earlier but uh, a protest in downtown Lima stopped my way there because it is not safe as you can imagine for a lady alone going in the middle of a protest with a cell phone and a gimbal uh, but I still wanted to to be with you be able to gather with you Thank you also for, for coming to Lima in this occasion. If you had no idea about that other tour, thank you still so much for being here today and giving me the chance of showing you my city, a city that I love so much. Uh, and I will be doing more tours, but I am thinking to do them almost last minute uh, because um, politically my country is very unstable. Maybe if you get to see news about Peru or clicking Google about Peru and the president we have, you will get a better picture of the situation. So sometimes it's difficult to, to know in advance if uh, a tour that is promised will be finally be, be coming. And I don't want to let you down. I, I, I for no reason, no means I would like to let you down, but I have so many plans in my head about tours that I want to show you in Lima. They are going to be a bit of history, a lot of reality and a lot of fun things. And uh, that, is, that is my wish uh, to share with you all. Bernhard, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much to you all if you were able to support this tour with a tip. Uh, as you know, these are free tours, uh, but a tip is highly, highly appreciated because it helps us to continue doing this. Um, so also, if you don't know how to tip, uh, let me activate a button that will help you. I saw also a comment from my friend Bernhard. Uh, we're status people for less worth. <laughs> Very good comment. Yes, my friend. Oh, you should see many of the statues we have, all the statues we have in Peru. So we don't know why those men were heroes in the first place and they are owner there. So thanks a lot for, for coming. And if you can, please give me a follow. Follow my channel. So as I said before, my tours are going to be coming last minute. So if you follow my channel, probably you're going to get access to see what's coming, um, uh, let's say, soon. Uh, if you are there, if you are connected and say, well, mom, maybe, you know, there's something fun. So you can get notification about that. See, so it's been really a huge, huge pleasure. Once again, my name is Vanessa Vasquez and um, I am waiting for you here in Lima, Peru. If you can, please follow my Facebook group, Adventures in Lima with Vanessa. Um, my business here in Lima is Adventurous Travel. Uh, I have an Instagram and a Facebook that goes for Adventurous Travel Guide. All my information is also in my description, in my profile in Hago. So I will be very happy to answer questions and get to know you and you get to know me better if you come to lima you have a guy here already so you know well thanks and have a lovely evening well for me it's evening i don't know maybe morning time maybe late you're maybe late in the midnight so i'm so sorry <laughs> if i am keeping you awake and uh, for long well have a lovely rest of of the day uh, take care muchas gracias see you see you soon gracias diana thanks for being here gracias Bye-bye. Thank you.